All right, guys, we're back with another VFR 800 bike build video. I know it's been a while. Things have just been pretty crazy around here. But if you're new here, is the bike we've been building. This is the VFR 800 with all kinds of trick goodies on it. If you wanna see what they are, go to the previous videos. Let me show you something that's been keeping me a little bit sidetracked was I built this trailer recently. This is another project I'm working on so I can get the VFR down to the welding shop to get the custom subframe built. I'm gonna build it myself. So to make that happen, um, I hit up Harbor Freight. They hooked me up with this trailer. It comes in boxes. You gotta put the whole thing together. I'm actually working on a separate video series, a separate video. I'm just gonna call it like the ultimate folding motorcycle trailer. Very cool trailer, it folds right here in the middle, folds up in half, and then it takes up very little space in your garage, like two foot by six foot area. You can see the little wheels down here, which I actually have upgraded. So this is getting closer. Had some more parts come in today and yesterday, so I can fi finish the customizing on this. But anyways, for today's bike build video, I don't have a ton to do to the bike, but we got some progress we can make. Let me show you what we got going on here. This box just arrived from France. This is the new windscreen. You know, it's gonna mount right up in here. And I have the new brake line for the back brake. These guys over at Coromoto make some really good stuff. And then I hit up some old friends of mine over at T-Rex Racing. They used to hook me up with bike stands and all kinds of protection. They actually hooked up some of the protection for this bike. Um, but they hooked me up with this single-sided swing arm stand and uh, we're going to get that thing put together and that's going to come with whoever wins this bike is going to get that stand which i want to mention to you guys if you want to win this bike over to the patreon sign up patreon.com forward slash motopilot for very little money you can sign up to win this bike or you know qualify to win the bike and uh so let's get started here first thing i want to do is I want to pull this out, take a look at it. I've only seen it in pictures. I haven't pulled it out of the box yet. Let's see what we got. Ta -da. Come on, baby. Oh, 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 check that out. That's, uh, what else we got? Nothing. So let me, um, let me put this camera on a tripod and let's tear into this. So if I recall, I ordered this windscreen off of eBay and I wanted to do something different because I got some pretty wild plans for the graphic wrap on this bike and I wanted something to tie in with that. I basically want this bike when you pull up to a red light or to a gas station, everybody around you is going to want to ask you questions about what this bike is and how you got it to look so amazing. So I didn't want to go with your traditional, you know, dark smoke windscreen like I always do. So let's see what we got here. All right, there she is. You can see from the backside, it's got, this has a protective film on it, so it looks all dull. But you can see the shine on this side here. So what it is, it's basically like, my red that I normally use in my builds is like a candy red. So this has that same candy red, like an anodized red finish, and it fades to black down here. So, the plan I have for the graphics on this bike, this is gonna work perfect and it's gonna look super dynamic. So I guess next thing you do, let's slide it on the bike, see how she looks. Now the cool thing about these VFR fairings is it just has two tabs right here that go in these slots and then these two bolts mount up right here. I'm basically just gonna put this on in position. I'm not gonna bolt it down tight. I still need to get the fairings all in place and bolted down tight, but I just want to Make sure it's gonna fit good, because you never know with these non-OEM parts. All right, geez, there we go. And then just kind of pull it forward and it, everything pops into place. Let's go ahead and peel this film off. See how pretty she's gonna look. Oh yeah. Ooh, look at that. That's Pretty sick, people. I like it. It's like a really deep red, so it's not too bright. Then when you see what graphics I'm gonna put on this bike, you're gonna understand why I did this. You may think you know, but you don't. Anyways, um, that's cool, man. All right, so here's the fairing in place. And one thing I've never loved about the VFR fairing is it's just kind of big. 
And so I'm thinking what I want to do is start at this point here and just cut off the last, I guess it's about two inches. Just make a cut right around there and make it that much smaller. I'm a little fearful of doing that because I could screw it up, but um, I want to use like a small Dremel blade so it doesn't generate too much heat. So let's put some tape there. Just want to kind of get a look at it and see if this gives us a better idea of what we're looking at. So there's a little corner right here that stops here and that's where I want to cut. And just come take that there. And I'll actually use this as my cutting guide. I don't know if I'm going to cut it right now in this video because I don't have a small Dremel wheel. I wasn't planning on doing this. It's an idea I just kind of had. But maybe I'll fit it into this video. I'm not sure. Something like that. So it would be that much, that's quite a bit smaller. I mean, I think that's gonna look way better. And then the cool thing is with this shield, this bare edge right here came with this rubber trim. It's like a U-shaped trim. You just pop it along the edge here to give it a nice, safer edge. I don't know, it looks better. To me, it looks better without it. It's more streamlined, but um, you know, have the option to use this if we need it. If the cut's not perfect or whatever, we got some cover up here. Okay guys, check out this angle on the fairing. Um, I wanted to try to see what it looked like in the daylight, out in the sun. I think you get an idea here for the light coming through. I mean, this thing outdoors is gonna pop. It's gonna look sick. Really, I was really worried about this when I ordered. I go, this thing's gonna look corny, it's gonna look cheesy. I think it looks pretty bomb, but what do you guys think? All right, the next thing you want to look at installing is this rear brake line from CoreMoto. You can order any length line you want here. You can order any color, any color logo print here, any color fitting. I mean, sky's the limit with these guys. So, I mean, different, you can order what type of fittings you want on the ends. Here I got a 45 degree, and here I have a straight. So if I remember correctly, uh, this one here, and this line I ordered 54 inches long, CoreMoto here, just go to CoreMoto.com, check them out. Yeah, 54 inches because I built this bracket right here to run the line along. Now I had the idea, and some of you guys even mentioned like, why don't I run the brake line from the back brake over here through the swing arm and just have it pop out down here and go in. There's actually a hole down here, but it'd have to be made bigger. That wouldn't be a big deal. My concern was swing arms going up and down, going down the road, it's doing, making all this action. And you can't really protect this line on the inside of the swing arm from wearing through. So next thing you know, you have a back brake for a while and four or five months later, you got a hole in your line and you go to grab your back brake and there's nothing there. So obviously it's not gonna look as sexy, but the line will be more protected from abrasion by having it going through this bracket here. So don't think I didn't think of that. It just doesn't seem like the best way to go for this install. So let's see here. In the, the brake line, you can also come with bolts. You can order bolts for a single fitting, or if you got two fittings, I'll bring, send you a longer bolt for, for that. So these guys are on top of it, man. Um, they aren't sponsoring this, this episode. Uh, I just, I paid for these brake lines. I bought multiple brake lines for the front and I'm pretty happy with them. So I think the back one has a, is the straight fitting for the back. So we just make sure you use the brass washers. I don't know if they're brass or copper or whatever they are. Put one on, slide the bolt through the fitting. Come on. Then slide another one on. So you want one on each side of that fitting, make sure you got a good seal. And then we're gonna go through this holder right here. Just come through there. And then you can't see this, but I'm just going to screw it into the caliper. And then I'm just going to put it on hand tight for now until I get everything routed and then I'll batten everything down. Now, another thing you can do with these brake lines from CoreMoto is you can tell them how many of these rubber grommets you want. I picked three to protect it like along here. I didn't want the line right against the metal. I wanted to kind of float it in there. So I've got one, two, 
three grommets and we'll just clamp those to this metal bracket. So let's feed this through here, across the back of the motor and go to the other side and hook it up to the master cylinder. All right, so what I've done here is I've brought the line through the back side of the motor and, but I'm above the exhaust and I wanna keep this thing as far away from the exhaust as possible. Now, because we're using a, uh, a different rear brake setup, I, I have this bolt. It's basically got wiring to it. This will actuate the tail light. So we'll be using this instead of this traditional bolt like this. And there's already a copper washer on there, brass, copper, whatever it is. So let's make sure we have one on this right here. Just feed that through the hole and line it up. Sorry, my fat fingers are in the way. And just scoot in the top of the master cylinder there. 15 millimeter wrench. I want to get my wire too twisted here and just tighten this down. Okay, and then this will eventually get wired into the tail light. We're doing a new super mini LED strip light. But now we got this tightened down here. So you can see here I have a billet aftermarket reservoir that'll eventually be mounted to the new subframe. So I'm not gonna put fluid in this right now and bleed it out and everything. Um, I also need to attach, see down here, let me show you. I also need to attach the rear brake arm to the plunger here because this is all aftermarket, this is all custom. So I'm gonna have to customize this bracket to mount to this bolt. And I haven't done that yet, but hey, at least we'll get the line on. Um, let's go around to the other side. Okay, so you see right here, there's this black line here. It's a little bit thinner than the brake line. It goes around down here and it mounts near the back brake caliper. This is an ABS sensor and we're not running ABS on this bike. I'm just not a fan of it. And we changed the entire braking system on this to be direct braking. It used to have that braking where you hit the back brake and it actuates the front brake. Big old contraption, all that garbage is gone. So we're just gonna take this off and just have a brake line. So what I'm doing for today is I've got these wide white straps, zip ties, and I'm gonna use these to mount it, but then I'm gonna replace them with black. I thought I had black ones, but apparently I ran out. So we have the line going through the hoop in the back, and then I'm gonna put one a clamp at the very back here. And then when I put the black ones on, I'll just rotate the, you know, this bulk right here. I'll rotate that to the back so you don't see it. But this just give me an idea if this is gonna work too. I'll put the other grommet just ahead of this bracket here. I might even see if I can find some wider straps. I'd like to find a strap that's as wide as this grommet right here, which looks like it's about half an inch. And I'm gonna go to a real hardware store and see what they have. Places like Home Depot and Lowe's, they just don't have the types of, those types of specialty items. So, so I got this grommet here in the middle. I just don't like that the straps aren't as wide as the grommet. It just looks kind of cheesy. You know, you want something nice and white here, so. Um, but this gives me a better idea of what's the best way to strap this thing down. Something like that. I mean, you know, that's not, I mean, that's not ideal. I, want, I do want a wider strap, but at least the line looks like it's nice and straight. Comes around here, it clears the exhaust. I might put another strap up here somewhere just to hold this up like that, just to keep it as far away from the exhaust as possible. Comes down here and it doesn't have too much slack going back down to the rear brake caliper. So I really like these lines. This is the red transparent, transparent red. It's kind of like an anodized looking line. So it ties in really well with the other red that's on the bike. What I want to do next is look at the single sided swing arm stand. 
get that thing put together, get it on the bike here, see how that thing works. So let's go check that out. So once again, this is from T-Rex. It came as three pieces. It didn't come with any directions because this was like their last one and it was like a demo one. And they asked me if I wanted it. I'm like, yeah, man, just send it out. So they sponsored, you know, this stand for me and uh, stoked on those guys. They've always taken good care of me and my builds. So it came with three bolts here. This is the handle. So, you know, to, to activate the stand. And I'm not 100% sure what this is right here, but it's adjustable. I'm just gonna push it all the way in for now. And then this is what goes into the back wheel. So first thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna stick the handle in here and check this out. I'm gonna show you something here. This, oh, by the way, this thing has really nice heavy wheels. They've always done a great job with their wheels on their stands. Some stands even have like double wheels, I believe. But on this thing here, you can mount the handle on this side or on that side, depending on you know your setup. So I'm gonna mount it on this side because I want this, this to be on the left side of the wheel. So I'm gonna put this in here, like a so. Tighten those down with a, uh, what do I have here? 13 millimeter. Come back, get that with a wrench. This thing's in the way. So, um, so now I have that like that. Now the cool thing too is if you mount this on the other side, it has a stopper on this side for if you reverse it. So that's, I was like, what is this all about? Well, obviously, you know, this one's for this side, that one's for the other side. So this goes through here like this. So it'd be sitting like that. And then this goes into your back wheel. This goes all the way through your wheel and then you stabilize it with this wing nut. It might be easier to put it in the wheel then slide this on, but let's try it this way first. So that goes in there like that. Bolt and washer on this end here. I'm just going to hand tighten it for now because I might take it apart. Then I'll just take off this wing nut and it's like a nylon washer. And let's try to stick her on the back. So this threaded rod, we're just going to slide it through the wheel here. Like a so. Like that. Look, that's a really nice, great fit. This is made specifically for the VFR, so it fits really good uh, in the hole there. And then if you come over to the other side, let's check it out. So if you see right here, this stud came out the other side. So we're just gonna get some of that dust off there. We don't want to scratch. Slide on your nylon disc and then thread on your wing nut. And I'm not gonna tighten it down tight. I'm just gonna take it snug, back it off a little bit. So it's like that. You don't wanna mark your wheel, actually, I so I'm gonna back it off a little more. So there we go. All right, see, let's see how this is gonna work. I mean, obviously this is made to be used when the bike's on the ground. It might have a problem with it being on the stand here, but I really want it for when I work on the bike. See how it's kind of wobbly? I wanted to stabilize that. And then whoever gets the bike, obviously they'll have a nice cool stand. I love these center stands. So, wow, I can't even get it to, uh, Oh, you know what the problem is? Because the front wheel is clamped in the vise, the bike can't come backwards. Normally when you do these, as you push them down, you know what? I think I have this in backwards too. I think this is supposed to go, yeah. Okay guys, my bad. I had the handle in to where it was coming out like this and uh, didn't, so I took it out, spun it around. Now it comes out at an angle, comes straight back, almost parallel with the bike. So let's see, you know, I am trying to roll this on a mild diamond plate here. The bike can't roll backwards like they normally do when they're on the ground. So let me just kind of, oh shit, here we go. Yeah, it's working. All right. Oh, God, that scared me. Okay. So the wood just slipped here. 
All right, there we go. Check it out. That's pretty sweet. Now check this out. I cannot figure out what this is for. I mean, it's got a rubber end on it. It's just a piece of tubing with a rubber end and it slides in and out. I mean, what, what, what could this be for? I clueless. I mean, unless you want to, I mean, it's pumping into the brake caliper. So I'm pretty clueless what this thing does. If you guys got any idea, leave a comment below. I am clueless. All right, guys, that is a wrap for this episode. I know it wasn't a very intense one. Not a lot to happen with the bike, but there, we are two steps closer to getting the thing wrapped up and every little bit helps. And until I get this trailer wrapped up over here, I can't, you know, tackle the last thing, which is the subframe. There's some little knickknacks to wrap up, but um, we'll get to those soon. And then once we get the subframe done, I'm gonna do the wrap, but the wrap will not be seen until the whole bike reveal. So um, I'll obviously keep you guys up to date on that as we progress. And I'll talk about it again when I go to do the subframe. Next weekend, my goal is to get the trailer down to the welding shop because I still need to get the, uh, the some bracing added, the platforms on top, and then that pretty much uh, wraps it up. I got all the electrical done today. Then I can get the bike on the trailer, take it down, work on it. You guys have seen me in the Metal Fab shop before, those of you who've been around for a while. Anyhow, don't forget, if you want to qualify to win the bike, for as little as $1 per new video over on patreon.com forward slash motopilot, go check that out. And we'll see you guys in the next episode.